So I've never videotaped myself cooking before, but I've been watching The Worst Cooks in America on Hulu, and I'm definitely better than them. I like my cooking. So I figured I'm going to make my own meal tonight for dinner and just kind of wing it, add my own stuff, videotape it, see how it comes out. Sounds like a plan to me. Enjoy. So first I'm going to make um, almost like a caramelized apple glaze because I'm going to make some glazed carrots. So I started by chopping up, well peeling, and then chopping up three apples. And so now I'm going to be putting them into a pan where I'm going to add some water, brown sugar, the apples, a little bit of vanilla, and some apple seasoning, I think. So let's watch me do that. All right, so getting my measuring cups out and my measuring spoon so I have an idea of what I've put in what. So I'm going to use a cup and a half of water in the pan. So that's my first step. One cup. Half a cup. So I got one and a half cups of water. And then I want to use the brown sugar, which I have in here. Nice brown sugar. And I think I'm going to just put one tablespoon of brown sugar in there. No. I like to make it even. All nice and even. So into the water. And then I'm going to put the water on five for now. Well, things to let things start warming up. Then I'm going to get the vanilla extract and just use Let's do half a teaspoon, so it's not too bad. Half a teaspoon. All right. Half a teaspoon in there. And then let's add a handful of apples that I've cut up. Put them in there. Get that apple taste. Maybe a handful and a half. I'd say fill up the top of the water with apples. Get a little spoon. Actually, I can just use a regular spoon. Put a regular spoon. Stir that up in there. And then I'm going to get some apple seasoning and a little bit of nutmeg and add that in. just picked this up today because I wanted to make an apple pie, but mixing it up. So apple pie spice, ground nutmeg, and then some ground cinnamon. And I'm just going to do a little dash of each, you know, just sprinkle it on in. So let's do a little bit of the cinnamon first. Make a little bit of mess. And then we'll do the nutmeg, which I got to open. Oh no! It didn't open right. Oh, good, right, okay. Ooh, it's such strong smelling, so I do a little bit less of the nutmeg, maybe half a pinch. <laughs> half a pinch. Give it only a little spice. And then I gotta open this one too. Now that was much easier to open. Ooh, that smells good. And we'll do a little. Ooh, hopefully, that's not too much. Now we'll mix this up again. Alright, so let me show you what it looks like so far. So this is what it looks like so far. We're just going to let it boil. Keep mixing it every once in a while. And I'm going to move on to the carrots. Peeling them or chopping them the way I want next. So the extra apples I have I'm going to put in a bowl here. Because I'm going to use them later for like a little dessert I'm going to make. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do, but I might fry them up. Give that a try. So 
extra apples on the side. Then I've got to rinse off the cutting board so I can do that again. Make sure you're nice and sanitized. All right, so I got everything out. Got the carrots. I'm gonna use some ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, crush up some cloves, onion powder, and some garlic cloves, as well as some chopped onions. So for now, I'm gonna add some butter into the apple glaze mix we're making. You always gotta have some butter just to help give it that extra flavor. And it smells delicious right now as it's cooking. The water's just starting to boil. Let's stir that up again before we move on to the carrots and then lower the heat down to three just so we don't get too much of a boil too soon. And I'm just gonna leave the butter out because we'll need that later. All right, now I'm gonna do things a little different and cut the carrots up a little small. So I'm gonna pour the carrots out onto the cutting board. So for now, this is what I have for the carrots, the spices. I'm gonna cut up some onions as well. I'm gonna cut these up so they're more cube sized. And then they're gonna go in this pan and the glaze is gonna go over it, which is gonna help them not stick, which is important. So now I'm gonna cut up some onions. Well, actually I'm gonna cut up the carrots, then cut up some onions. All right, so I got the carrots all cut up and put in the pan, just enough to cover the bottom. I did add another tablespoon of brown sugar in there and have stirred it a few times. You don't want it to get too boiling and I've turned it down all the way to one. I've also preheated the oven to 375 and then I got my three cloves that I'm going to use and some onions. I'm going to cut those up, crush the uh, garlic cloves first um, and then cut these up and then I'm going to sprinkle them over the onions before adding the spices and then the glaze on top. Alright, so I added the cloves and the onions, tried to spread them as nicely as I could. Those three cloves were perfect for the amount. Same with the little pieces of onions I had, gave me just enough. Obviously stirred this again. It's looking really nice. Now it's time to do the spices, and then we're going to taste the sauce in this and see how it, how it tastes. Make sure it's good. Alright, terrible angle. So first, add a little ground cinnamon. I sprinkle it across. Good. Don't want to add too much because the flavors of the glaze are going to be in there too. So then we got the nutmeg. Used a little less than the cinnamon. Don't mind my little baby bump over here. It's going to be 19 weeks on Saturday. Super excited for this little boy to join me. All right, so we got the cloves. I'm going to wipe my cutting board and then crush some of these cloves so that I can add that to as well. Because we don't want to have full cloves in there. That's not going to taste very good. Crush them off. Now they're a little difficult to crush them. I'm going to use the knife to cut them as well. But I like the taste of the full one crushed up. It is going everywhere. But oh, the flavor will be nice. That's for sure. Crush, crush, crush. Smell amazing. I love the smell of cloves. All right. So I got enough. Just do a little sprinkle here. Add a little nice freshness of the clove in there. Sprinkle it across as much as I could. That was a little more difficult than expected, but I still think it'll be worth it. Of course, wash your hands every time you're done with one part of the meal. You don't want to have contamination or different flavors 
going in because of that. All right, sprinkle the clover on. Now I'm gonna add a little onion powder just to accentuate the other, you know, clove of garlic I have in there. Onion powder is always been one of my favorites, and I do use a little extra than most people. All right, so we got that all seasoned. It looks nice. Now we're going to taste the glaze. So let's see if I can show you what it looks like. Can you see that? No, very little. Let's see what it tastes like. It's good, but it's not very strong. So, hmm. I'm trying to get an angle so you don't just see my stomach. We should add stuff to this. The nutmeg you can really taste. I can't tell if it's the nutmeg or the apple pie spice, but you can taste it. So I might add a little more cinnamon and a little more sh um, brown sugar and a little more vanilla. And I think we'll be good. So let's do another splash. Splash and a half of the cinnamon. Add a little more. Let's not do, no, no, let's do half a tablespoon. Have a half a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon. That's the same size. Oh, I guess we're just going to use a full tablespoon. I got the full tablespoon. Can't go wrong with sugar, right? Alright, and then we'll do another half teaspoon of the vanilla. Like I said, I'm not using a recipe. I'm just kind of winging it here. Why not? I like to cook. So let's stir that in. Oh yeah, see I like that color a lot nicer. I was looking to darken it, so I think that vanilla and the extra brown sugar definitely helped. I'm going to turn it back to three. Give it that little boil. So we got to let that go next. Now i got to think about what I'm going to do for the main course, so in one second. Alright, so we're definitely going to be using ground beef. have an idea of what we're going to do, but before that, I did turn the apple uh, glaze back down to low. Give it a few stirs. We're going to taste it again, make sure it's where we want it to be, and then we can add it to the carrots. So. And I did wipe off the spoon before I put it back in there. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's just sweet enough. Very good. So I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm going to use this to make sure the apples don't get on the carrots because you don't want the actual apples on there, you just want the glaze. Let me see if I can angle this so you can see me doing it. There we go. Apple will be down there. You gonna stay? Okay. So, I'm gonna do a little stir again just to make sure we got it all stirred in there. Mm. I can't believe this tastes so good. I cannot wait for the carrots. All right, then I'm just gonna put this on top and use this to help drain the glaze over the carrots. Okay, all the way down on the carrots. You don't want it to be too high, but enough that ah, it covers all the carrots. That looks good to me, and I still have a little left over. It's okay. Let me show you guys the carrots. So this is what they look like now. This glaze should be enough. It covers them just enough. I don't want it to be too soupy, but I'm super excited. This looks really good. I'm going to sprinkle, oh, let me do this real quick, some brown sugar on top just to give it that little extra. Nice brown sugar. So you can grab a little, and we're just gonna sprinkle it over. Give it that little extra oomph. Help it, hopefully, caramelize a little bit more because, like I said, doing this from scratch, 
no idea if I'm doing it right, but I mean, it looks good to me. So hopefully, I'll oh, add a little more. That's enough. Do, 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 do. All right. I'm excited to see what that turns into. So now on to the next part. All right. I'm going to toss the carrots in the oven at 375 and get those started. I put them on the top shelf. I'm going to put a 15 minute timer on and then we can check them. I think that sounds good. Hold on, go let the dog out. <laughs> Gave my hands a quick wash because we're going to move on to the ground beef. I got a bowl, ground beef, and then the spices. I got some more onion and the garlic cloves back out and then bacon but that's going to be for a little later <laughs> way over what I normally do but like I said gonna make something I'm gonna try to do little hamburger um, cups and we're gonna bake the hamburger pull it back out and then put the bacon around the cup put it back in there um, and then we're gonna make some homemade mashed potatoes Put the potatoes on top and then I don't have any parsley to put on top of the potatoes but we'll think of something. So I'm going to use a whole pound of hamburger. So let's cut that open. Get this ready to go in. Goodness gracious. All nice and in there. All right. Got the hamburger in the bowl. So I'm gonna use my hands to kind of pick it apart a little. Make sure I can get everything seasoned properly. Let me bark it. Oh, come on, that's great cameras. Anyone. Okay. So next, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick before I touch the seasoning. Mm. The dawn dish soap always helps get the grease off. Alright, so I'm going to add a little lemon pepper. I'm going to add some lemon pepper in the top, maybe. Lemon pepper in the meat. And then I have some smoky Montreal steak. Hopefully the fiance likes this food when I'm done. He'll be eating it when he gets home from work tonight. And then I'm going to add some basil leaves as well. Basil is always a good one to add in there. I always use a little extra. Now I'm also going to add a little of the onion powder. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. So give it a little oomph. Alright. So got that all set. Now i got to chop the onions and the cloves again to add it in and then I'll show you what it looks like before we smush it up. All right, so this is the hamburger meat with the spices, the clove of garlic, this clove of garlic in it, and the onion I've chopped up. Now we're going to smush it up with our hands, get make sure everything's all um, baked together, and then we're going to get the cupcake trays out, and we're actually going to make little cups that we can bake, get that meat all nice and baked, and then we're going to pull it out, wrap bacon around it, and bake it again and then we're actually before we put them in there gonna work on getting the mashed potatoes and the potatoes nice and boiled so can't wait all right so the oven just went off for the glazed carrots so we're gonna see how they look and if they need more time mm, they smell delicious all right so they're still kind of soupy let's get a fork and see how much they cook. 
Alright, so they're quite hard still, so they're going to go back in. I feel like we could do another 15 minutes and we ain't going to overcook them. So, let's put them back in the oven. Actually, let's do a little stir first. Sounds like a good plan to me. So, make sure this is all nice and wiped off. Alright, so let's do a little stir. You make sure the flavor is getting all over everything. Oven's nice and warm. All right. I'm gonna give them a nice little stir. Let's put that back in the oven for another 15. Ooh. Sweating from that oven. All right. Another 15 minutes in there for the carrots. I just filled up the pot for potatoes because before we mashed the hamburger, I figured we'd get the potatoes nice and boiling first. So, got my bag of potatoes. Let's pull out like five, should be enough. We can cut them up, put them in there. One. I'm just making sure they look okay. Three. I might only do four. We're only going to do four because they're decent size. So we got four potatoes. Now, do, do, do. I'm going to switch knives. Go to this one. And I'm going to cut them up a little small so it, they cook through faster. Um, and then I'm going to add some cinnamon, onion, and basil into the water with the butter to help soak in that flavor of the potato before we actually, you know, mash them up and everything. So that's the plan next. All right, so four potatoes was definitely enough, so we look good there. And now it's time to add all the spices. All right, so I'm gonna start with adding some of the cinnamon. I love cinnamon in the potatoes. It gives it that little extra mm. And I don't feel like people are really used to it, but it tastes good, I do, do it a lot. And some onion powder. Like I said, I'm just adding this into the water because it soaks it into the potato while they're cooking. And then the basil on top. And then we want to put this on high. Get it all nice and boiled. And then of course, we got to add our butter to the water. And a nice big spoon. And then scoop out some butter. Now my grandma always used a lot of butter with potatoes, so I do as well. You know, it might seem like a lot, but it leaves them a little softer, it gives them that flavor. So we're just gonna let this all sit in here. Mm, I love the way it smells every time I add the seasonings. I always try to rub the butter around a little, obviously. It's hard while it's still not boiling. But I'm gonna let that boil. While these are boiling, I'm gonna work on the meats, get it all together, and then we're gonna put it on the pans and get that bacon. All right, so I got the meat all done. Tails are going. We're gonna be using the back end of this. I am going to spray it down with the butter spray, cooking spray, simply just to make sure the hamburger doesn't stick to this. I don't know if I need to or not, but I feel like it's safe. The carrots are about to be any second. So we're going to have to see how those look. Alright. Let's check the carrots. I'm excited here. See how they feel. The biggest thing is texture of the carrot. Ooh, they're getting cooked for sure. So they look pretty good. Let's feel with the fork. Mm, Alright, they're still quite tough, so we're going to put them back in after we do a little stir again. I always think the stir is important for the flavor, keep it soaking in. Mmm, smells super good. And this is also why I cut the carrots up. Now the glaze is definitely soaking into the carrots because there's not nearly as much in this pan as there was when we started. I mean, I can always add more. 
we need to, but we'll see how it is. You know what? And we add a little more of the glaze, just because it makes sure. Do I always keep what's left over? We'll add a little more. And just add the rest of it. See you guys. Have a great night. Right. And again, mix it up. Mix it up. All right. Now we're going to put this back in the oven. I like doing the 15 minute intervals because at least then you get to check it. Especially since I'm winging it. So we'll put these back in for another 15 minutes. Uh, all right, 15 minutes. So we got this all sprayed down. Now we got our hamburger meat. We're going to try to make the little cups around it and then bake it in here as well. Keep it at the 375. So you can see all the stuffs in there. I wish I could just show you in the light because it would look better. I'm going to smoosh it down. First time I'm ever attempting this, so I am learning alongside you. If you ever decide to try to make this as well, like I said, first time. All right. Got that nice wrapped around. Now I'm going to put this in the oven first for a little bit, let it bake a little, and then wrap the bacon around the sides. Just then we know the hamburger is definitely going to be cooked all the way. Cause that's the last thing we want to so not have cooked hamburger all the way so we'll see how many this pound will make right. now I would pause it and just do this myself while you guys wait but since my hands are all icky from the hamburger meat Hopefully I can just fast forward well when I do the video all together. Now some of these are going to look nicer than others, <laughs> but we'll see. Alright, so this is going to take way longer than expected. <laughs> Let me turn this off with like one of these. Alright, so we got eight hamburger cups. Hopefully they cook nicely. And this is the glazed carrots. They are getting a little better, but they're still hard, even though I can poke the fork through. So we're going to do another 15 minutes with the glazed carrots. But like you can see, they're soaking up this, which is helping them keep the flavor as well as take away some of the wetness. So I'm excited about that. So another 15 minutes for these. I'm going to put these in at the same 375, cook for 15 minutes, and we'll take them out and see what it's like. And then we're going to wrap bacon around the outside of all of them. Okay, so while I have another six minutes on the oven, I'm going to get these eight pieces of bacon that I'm going to need out. And I'm going to add some maple syrup to them to give them a maple taste, as this is just simply original bacon. Trying to fit all of them on here. Oh, 
Alright, so it looks like I can only fit six on there. I'm going to wash my hands because they're kind of gross. Now that my hands are washed and I feel better about what I am touching, the syrup when I opened it was way too sticky. So I'm going to get the back side of a spoon. I'm just going to use one of the little ones we have. Now I'm going to just drizzle this across each one. Now, doing one side should be enough because the bacon is going to be, I'm going to do the outs, this is what I plan to have on the outside, this is the, is the maple part. Alright, I got it all drizzled, and then we're just going to use the back of the spoon, smoosh it all into it, and this is just going to give it a nice little maple flavor can add a little sugar to it as well if we'd like. And then the potato should be done any minute. Yeah, this. Oh, nice. Yum, yum, yum. Looks good, looks good. And we're going to get the brown sugar again and just do some light sprinkles here across it because you don't want too much but just enough to give it a little extra flavor and then we can use the spoon again smush it all in there so we can make it maple brown sugar bacon Figured this would help a little, give it that extra flavor when we put it around the meat. Hmm. All right, again, gotta go wash my hands. Lots of hand washing. Hmm. Oven's about to beep off. All right, so real quick. Put the brown sugar away. Yeah, we're just gonna smush in the brown sugar into the maple syrup. Like I said, this part is gonna be the outside that we are going to wrap across. oven's about to go off so we can check in. Now we still got to do two more pieces once we wrap it around. We got to check on everything first. Two, one, beep. Let's see. Ooh, well, I can tell you the hamburgers didn't come out exactly like we wanted them to. Ooh, they are a little smaller. So we might have to <laughs> switch it up a bit with the bacon, but I'm still going to do it. Alright, well since they're smaller, we're going to switch pans, which is alright. Oh, we're going to check the carrots too. Ooh, they look really well. Let's test the carrots. 
Not bad, not bad. Let's test one out ourselves. Mmm. I'm gonna do it one more time in there. Let's make them a little softer. Those taste great. Now we're gonna rig up these. <laughs> what I attempted to make hamburger ball, uh, bowls and still make something delicious so put those in again I'm just gonna do another 10 minutes should be enough for those I'll do 11 let's grab a different pan here oh. and let's attempt to do something else here with the bacon now let's see what this one. I'm gonna try a few different things. Maybe we can just do a little wrap here. What I'm gonna do is spray the pan first. Probably a good idea. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Always improvise. Definitely our first time trying this, so you know, we'll see. Let's spray the pan down, make sure nothing comes too sticky. Alright. Gotta be careful, some of these are a little flimsy, but I still have faith in them. So, I guess these bowls were a little harder to make than I thought they'd be. But I still think they're gonna be quite tasty. And then we're gonna put the potato on top. Now we got to do the other two bacon, so let me wash my hands again. And then we're going to do the mashed potatoes afterwards. We'll be baking there for probably only five or six minutes with the bacon on there. Should be enough. We'll check it after five minutes just to make sure we don't over bake it with the bacon.
the brown sugar away so it ain't in our way. Smush these around. Got those. Wash my hands, put that in the oven. <laughs> Alright, there's exactly five minutes on the oven still. Worked out. Let's put these in. And now it's time to mash. The mashed potatoes. This has been a long process. <laughs> I'm not one to typically cook this long. So, we mash the mashed potatoes and we'll be almost done. Alright, so I went ahead and made the mashed potatoes on my own because I'm getting exhausted. But the carrots are all done there. They taste great. I've had a couple. Now I put the mashed potatoes on top of everything. The bacon's nice and crisp. And I'm going to put this in for just a couple minutes to get the cheese melted and then we're all done. All right, our finished product, nice melted cheese, nice bacon, burgers are nicely cooked, potatoes look nice, and then we got our glazed carrots. So I'm impressed. I think we did pretty good. Comment below. Let me know what you think. You guys have a blessed day. God bless.